for now, we are on page 24. We're getting ready to do the flower block. All right, the flower block. What we need is our background fabric, and that is this ice castle, this really light blue fabric in your kit. This needs to be cut eight and a half by six and a half. All right, I am going to put shape flex on the back of this, just so you know. So that is our background fabric. The next one is the stem and leaves. Okay, well, the stem and leaves is the green fabric. And if you remember, we cut the green fabric earlier. All right, and I have it right here. And there is the green fabric for our stem and leaves. So I'm probably going to put shape flex behind that. I'm not sure that it's going to have a satin stitch. It looks like it's decorative. So I'm going to absolutely put some shape flex on there. All right, the petals one, three and a half by three. So flower petals one is this mustard. Okay. And flower petals two. We're going to need cut out of this yellow scroll. So this piece should be three and a half by three. There it is, three and a half by three. So I'm going to actually um, cut this out. And I do believe the petals are all decorative stitch as well. So I am going to probably apply shape flex to all of these fabrics uh, for this design. So the yellow scroll, set that aside, that's the extra, and I'm going to cut the um, salvage off this piece right here. So there is the petals number two. All right, so this is what I have so far. And then the flower center is this orange. They call it an orange um, tuffled. All right, we only need a two by two inch piece. So we just need a little bit of this, but I'm, I'm just gonna put shape flex on it so I have it um, if I use it for something else. So this is the center. Now, the last thing you need is the flower pot. All right, so if we go over here, um, they actually used a scrap of fabric for the flower pot. It needs to be three and a half by three. I'm going to use the felt. All right, so we're going to use felt for the pie top and for the flower pot. And I just want them to kind of, you know, it'll bring it more cohesive togetherness of our design. So this is what I'm gonna use for the flower pot. I'm not gonna trim this down to size. I'm just gonna lay this when it comes time to laying that down and then trim it at that time and then what's left should be enough to um, do the pie. Cause I'm sure the pie filling is, you know, just a little sliver of this item. All right, so that's what we need for this design. So again, I'm not, the shape flex is not going on the felt. I am going to put shape flex on all of these fabrics and we will be back to um, load up our hoop, pick our quilting design and start our stitching of the flower block. Okay, the flower pot is what we're getting ready to start. It's number eight here on the squares for the quilting. So number eight for the flower, it says it wanted the wavy four but it's a four by six size so again i'm going to go into my blue clear tiles and go to scroll i'm going to pick up the four by six block by block design and load it and once i load that on my screen i'm going to go ahead and open up the flower quilting design right on top of that so again, I'm going to quilt this background of the fabric before I actually do the flower pot. Okay, I opened them both up. I'm gonna show you my screen. And I'm using a really big hoop again. So I went ahead and turned my design to go horizontally because I can do this design in the bottom of this hoop and I can do the pie in the top of the hoop, but I'm only gonna load one at a time. 
So I loaded up my scroll design and I loaded up my flower pot and it's centered in that design and then I moved them down to the bottom of my hoop to conserve stabilizer. So we're going to get ready and we're going to stitch out this design. And the first thing we stitch as usual is our placement line for our batting. So I'm going to hit start and I still have a dark the, the blue in there that I used to finish the um, pinwheel and that's fine I, I'm just gonna it's just gonna show me right now where to place my batting so that should be fine for doing that so I'm gonna get my scraps of batting out again because I'm back to like a smaller one this time or as the last one I needed a really big piece so I had to go find a bigger piece I think here I'll have some small ones And I do like to try and, you know, not put too big of a piece on there because, you know, like everybody else, I'm looking to conserve what I have. So, I think I can set this right up there. Cover that line up. I think this will be fine staying in place. I'm just going to hold at the bottom where the hoop is. So it's tacking it down. Didn't quite catch that corner, but it's really close. But I think it'll be just fine. So it is going to go around twice. And again, we're doing this because I want to quilt it. And I don't want the batting in the seams, right? So that's why I'm doing the block by block and then I'm going to trim this batting away when it's done. Okay, I'm going to force the hoop out a little bit. And I am just going to cut this right on off. So I can turn it this way a little bit so you can see. And I just lift the batting up a little bit as I cut. Okay, so it's the big piece I can get off of there and I'll have this little piece on the side. And this little piece off the top. So I'll tell you what I do with this. I'm going to cut this off. So this little piece of batting that's left, you would think, hey, I can't use that for anything. Um, I actually use it like when I'm done sewing. I'll wipe down my machine with it and it tends to grab the little threads and the dust that's sitting around and it, and it kind of pulls it to it. And I actually use this to kind of clean a little bit because it does like take up a lot of the lint and everything and then I throw it away. So I do use the little pieces of batting specifically for that. So just as an idea for anybody, one of my tips that I do. All right, the next step, it's going to show me where to place my fabric. So again, it's going to stitch, you know, a line around. That's about a quarter inch away, right, from the batting placement line. But this is where you want to place your fabric. So we want to get our background fabric. And the background fabric for the flower pot is that fabric called Ice Castle. So this is light blue, silky solid from Kimberbell. Here it is. And I'm going to place it right on here. And mine is cut bigger, of course, because I left it at the strip when we um, ripped it. And I'm just going to make sure that I have a little bit of overhang at the bottom the side top and bottom just like that and now we're going to tack this down well i'm going to go ahead and tack it down in the blue thread i have again we shouldn't see this tack down stitch at all it should be caught up in the um seam allowance but it is just a basting stitch if it does show at all that you can pick it out 
The next thing that comes up after this is to physically do the quilting. So again, I picked the scroll quilting because I wanted to, you know, keep everything the same. And for any of you that have the clear blue tiles, um, go ahead and, you know, like I did, you know, pick one of them. It, maybe you want one of the other designs and not the scrolls. And all I do is I read the instructions, I think, on page four about what size that they suggested that you use on the block, and that's the block I load. So they said open up a four by six block. Okay, that's what I did. All right, so I'm going to hit start. We're going to stitch all the quilting right now. And again, I am stitching all my quilting in white. So you're going to see a little a bit of it because it's on this blue, but it, it's still going to blend in pretty nice, I think. So once that is done, then we will be starting with these instructions. All right, so we're going to load the embroidery file. We already did that. And the first thing is going to be to stitch the leaf placement line. And it is suggesting that we put our green in at this point. So, when this is done, I want to make sure I get my green thread out and thread it in the machine. Alright, I have my green threaded. So I'm going to hit start. It's going to show me where to place the fabric to do the stem and the leaves for our little flower pot. All right. Trim that little piece off here at the beginning. Let me see what I have here. All right. So this was the piece I had left over from doing the leaf, the way I placed the leaf on the cherries. And it, it might cover that if you guys um, cut it the way that I did. Um, but to make sure that I cover this all up, I am going to get this one out. sure I got two sides covered and let the extra flow off all right so there we go I place my fabric down you can tape it if you need to I'm gonna hit start it's going to tack down this fabric so once it tacks down the fabric I'm going to trim my fabric close to the stitch line all right and then we're going to do a decorative stitch so it is going around twice I'm going to actually pull my hoop closer to me. And it's going to slide off my table all the way at the bottom here. But this allows me to at least unhook it. And now I can kind of put it back up on the table and trim the green fabric. And again, I did put the shape flex on it. So it's not going to like unravel and get like, you know, all these little threads with this decorative stitch. Now, you didn't have to put shape flex on it if you don't want to. All right, that's, you know, an option.
And again, you know, with me undoing the hoop, allows me to like turn this hoop all the way around. And get these curves cut on the leaves and things like that. Okay, doesn't look too bad. All right, I'm gonna hook my hoop back up again. I gotta sit down. I'm trying to do it standing up and it doesn't work like that. It's easier if I'm in front. Okay, so lock my hoop back in. When I hit start, it's going to move all the way back down where it was. And then I'm going to hit start again and do number three of the embroidery file, which is going to do all the decorative stitching around the green. So I'm going to let this stitch out and we'll see what it looks like. All right. It's almost done with the decorative stitching. If I look ahead, I will be on step number seven at the bottom of page 24. And we're going to change our thread color to the yellow mustard type color. All right. And we're going to actually place, um, do a placement line for the first set of stitching for our flower. All right. So I'm going to take the green out. And I'm going to load in my yellowish color, which to me is like a yellow gold. It's sort of like a gold looking color. That's the color that I'm stitching the flowers with. I think I need to clip that because it still looks like it's coming apart a little bit at the end. So I have yellow loaded. I'm going to hit start and stitch number four. And it's going to show me the placement of petal fabric number one. All right, so our petal fabric number one is the mustard seed silky solid. Okay. And again, Kimberbell has us cut this piece of fabric and just lay one down and not cut like three little pieces. But if you had some scraps, there's nothing that, you know, the little fabric police are going to yell at. You can use your scraps and cover it up if you had some little pieces of scrap. All right, so I have three hexes because they're six-sided that I need to cover up with my fabric. And again, I did put shape flex on the back. All right. So I'm going to set it here. I'm going to cover up this one. Make sure I got this one covered good. And I know my fabric's big enough that it's going to cover the others. I again, I'm just trying to slide it to the edge. So I'm not like just taking a big chunk out of the middle of the fabric. So it's tacking down these little hexes. When it tacks all three down, then we will trim close to the stitch line on all three. There's the second one, got one more to do, and then we'll be trimming it. So I'll return and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. Let's see, let me move this back up. I think you can see my hexes as they come in. So I have my three hexes and I trimmed them all up. So now I am on page 25. So we just turned another page. So at the top of 25, I'm gonna do the placement stitch for the number two petals. All right, so this is fabric number two for the petals. And for us, we're using this yellow scroll fabric. 
So it's going to show me where to place the fabric again. We're going to place, you know, one piece of fabric over all three hexes. We're going to tack them down. We're going to trim them. Just like we did the first three hexes. So same process. And I left the yellow in. I'm using that same color to do all of these. I wasn't going to change the color. All right. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to line this one up. I want to get this hexy in there and the bottom of the one way over there. Okay. Hit start. So now we're going to tack down these three hexes. And when that's done, I'm going to trim them up and we're going to see our flower except for the center. So we'll be back. All right. I have all my hexes done. Here's what the yellow looks like. Scroll after I cut them out. So the next step is number 15. We're going to do number eight of the embroidery file and it's going to do a decorative outline around all of our flowers. So it's only going to do it on the outside. Um, we still haven't put the center of the flower in. That's the next thing. So we have our yellow still in. I'm going to hit start and let it stitch this um, decorative outline. So here's what my flower looks like right now. So the next step is to stitch the placement line for the center hexi. Of course, we kind of know exactly where that's going to go. But it also suggests that we change the color of our thread. It's saying to put in a gray color. Um, I didn't do that. We were using this orange center for the hexi. So I'm, I, I picked an orange color. Now, I know exactly where this hexi needs to go. So I'm going to skip the placement line and just advance me one step forward to the tack down line. And I'm going to place my hexi right here on the center of that. And I might try to fussy the center of that to be, you know, the center of that particular um, design in this fabric. But you don't have to do that. But um, you can kind of feel underneath, and I kind of almost got that pretty good and centered in there. So I'm kind of happy with that. All right, I'm going to pull it closer to me because we just did the tack down. I'm not going to turn the camera just a little bit. So I'm just going to lift it up. And again, I did put um, Shape Flex Fusible Woven on the back of that, all the fabrics. Okay. So now what it's going to do, it's going to do a decorative stitch around the center of my flower. Now I'm going to leave that darker orange in there. And I'm going to let that stitch, that decorative stitch there on the flower. All right. So that is step number 11 of the embroidery file and I'm on step 20 of the instructions okay so let's do that decorative stitch is related to the flower pot all right so I want to get you know some thread to match the um the brown stitching there all right and we're gonna get ready for that all right so I have my brown loaded in the thread 
So we're on step 21. We're going to stitch the placement line for the pot. All right. And then what's going to happen is we're going to lay the felt down. Now, in this case, I'm using felt. I'm not using the, the actual fabric because we're using felt with the pie cover. And I kind of wanted the felt in more than just one spot on this pillow. Yeah, so we're just, you know, trying to get some things that, to line up here. And so I'm going to move this all the way to that end because I can see this area here. I can see the bottom area. And then I just have all the rest of the felt there. And um, basically, that's where we're going to get the um, pie crust will also be made out of the felt. So it's going to stitch around it twice and then we're going to trim close to the stitch line. And we're going to come back and it's going to do a satin stitch all the way around. So that'll be number 14 of the embroidery file. So I'm going to trim this up and do my satin stitch. That's going to take a little bit of time and we'll be back to do the ladybug. Alright, so I just finished doing the satin stitch all around the flower pot, which looks really nice. And I loaded my red thread in, so I am ready to do step number 26. It's 15 of the embroidery file, and it's to actually stitch the red part of our ladybug. So I'm going to hit start and stitch my little ladybug down here that's going to be on my little flower pot. And then when it's done stitching this, I'm going to load the black in and it's going to do all the details of the ladybug. Alright. So there's my little ladybug. And again, I'm going to pull my red thread through. I'm going to trim this little one right here. And now I need to re-thread with black. There we go. That's the black. Kind of hit start. And we're going to do the ladybug detail. Alright. Just filled in the um, head of the ladybug, doing the little antennas. And now it's going to probably do a couple little dots. I'll have some jump stitches there, it looks like, to um, trim out. And guess what? That's it. The next step is to remove it from the hoop and trim it. It's going to finish four and a half by six and a half. But look at this. You want to line it up so you just have a quarter inch underneath the pot when we get there. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a cutting video. All right. So now we're going to move on to number 27, page 27. 